Okay. We talk about this self-excited shunt generator and the process that goes on. We worked with the series generator. You guys were doing the lab with the series generator, and we use the residual magnetism to start the uh, generator process going. Starting off, we have your whole pieces there with residual magnetism. We had about three volts, right? As we started increasing the current through the series field, your output voltage increased, right? But the series field was dependent upon the current you had going through the series field. Okay? More current, higher volts. Worked out easy with you've got the uh, amp turns on your coil. Okay? The more turns, the more magnetic field, the more amps through there, the more magnetic field. So we couldn't change the turns on the coil, can we? Motor's fixed, so we have to increase the current to increase the strength of the magnetic field. Now in the shunt generator, we have a lot more turns of coil. I mean turns of wire here. Many more turns. The whole piece that I showed you yesterday, we had four turns a 14 gauge wire for the series field and we have about 10,000 turns of 24 gauge wire for the shunt field. Okay, Many, many, many more turns so it's much more sensitive and creates a much larger magnetic field than the series field does. So in here we have we've got our armature in parallel with the shunt field. Okay. And we have right here, we put our voltmeter out there. Okay. Everything's in here in parallel. What I did is I broke out the armature internal resistance. And you can't go out and buy a resistor and say, where's that resistor? Or look at that coil and say, where's that resistor? That internal resistance is made up of the, the coils of wire. Okay, it's all the resistance of that copper wound inside the armature there. Okay, this is going to cause voltage drop and power loss in your armature. Okay, this is what causes one of the sources of heat generation inside your armature. Okay, now if we look at this generator here, we have our little step-by-step -step chart that we've got here. What do we need to generate electricity? You need a magnetic field and you need movement of a conductor in that magnetic field, right? Okay? So we'll start our rotation and we have residual magnetism on our pole pieces over there. Okay? The voltage increases a little bit. We saw that start off yesterday, what, three volts? Okay, in the series. That voltage increase right here, 3 volts, then increases this current through the shunt field, right? Okay? Increases your IF, your field current. Now if we increase that current from 0 to some value, let's say 6 milliamps, okay, that's going to increase the magnetic field that's generated by this coil, right? Okay? So that in turn increases your magnetic field here. Now we've got a larger magnetic field here. What happens to the next step? Goes up. Your voltage goes up. Come back up around here, your voltage increases. Okay? Stronger magnetic field, voltage is going to increase. Voltage increases at this point here. Current's going to go up, right? You've got your I, <coughs> equal to E over R, don't forget the Ohm's law. So as our, our resistance stays the same, our voltage is increasing, that means our current is increasing. Okay? So the current increases, amp turns are increasing, that means our strength of our magnetic field is increasing even more. Okay? We sit here in this loop. We keep going in this loop. 
the voltage increases, which increases the current. The current increases the magnetic field. And we keep in this loop almost instantaneously until we get to the point of saturation and we cannot cram any more field lines in there. We're at the rated voltage for this generator. Okay? The process continues on, continues on. And it's almost instantaneous. In fact, as you see the RPM go up, the voltage will increase with the RPM. And about the time it gets up to full load speed, you'll also be at rated voltage. Okay? And you have to keep in mind, it's not just a calculate one ohm's law problem, we're done. You've got this interaction and effects and everything that are going on. And you've got this wheel here, if you will, keep running around voltage increase. The voltage increase causes a current increase in your field loop. That current increase causes an increase in strength of magnetic field. Okay? Now, keep this in mind when we go the other way. What happens if I close this switch here and start drawing current? It okay. Why would it increase the field strength? Because well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about this. I'm going to close this switch, and I've got 5 amps through here. 5 amps. Okay? Now, if I look up here, at our top, let's say we have 0 0.25 amps here, and we have 5 amps here. Okay? What is our total current? 5.25. 5.25 amps. Okay? Is all that current going through this internal resistor here? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. So what is the voltage drop across that <coughs> resistor? 7.875. What was that? 7.875. Okay. We have 7.875 volts. Okay. Now, if our generator started generating 120 something volts, now we have to subtract 7.875 for it, from it. What is our new volt reading out here? 12 point something. About 112, right? About 112 volts out here. Now, if this shove field went from 120 down to 112, we got a problem, don't we? What happens? Voltage decrease, that means the current decrease, which means your magnetic field decrease, which means our output volt voltage went down even more, didn't it? Okay? When we did our graph yesterday, we talked about the three different components for voltage loss in the generator. We talked about armature reaction, we talked about IR drop. This is your IR drop right here. And we talked about the loss of the magnetic field. That's a consequence of going backwards on this. Voltage decreases, decreases the current in our shut field here. That current decrease reduces the magnetic field, which then reduces the voltage output. Okay? What were the three things that um, you said uh, okay. decrease it again? Just the armature reaction. Is that and that's the reaction to the resistor? That's the twisting of your magnetic field yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Okay. Yeah. Armature reaction. IR loss. Right here. Okay. And reduction. Reduction of the magnetic field over here because of less current in the shunt field. The IR loss is when you multiply 5.25 times 1.5, right? 5.25 times 1.5 will give us our IR drop, yes. 
Okay? What other questions we have? So, you know, um, like if the voltage drop, right, um, can we put maybe uh, uh, the transformer in to keep the voltage applied to the, okay. mo uh, the motor? So, he runs okay, steady, you know, steady? We're all talking DC here, so there's no transformer. Okay. But we will talk in a moment about a separately excited. Okay. One of the things here is if you put a variable resistor here, okay. you can adjust the current through this shunt field, but you can't ever raise it up higher than the, than the armature's rated voltage. Okay? You can reduce your voltage, you can lower the voltage to control your output voltage, but you can't raise it higher. Okay? The next generator that I'm going to talk about is a self-excited, not the self excited a separately excited shunt generator, and I'll show you how we can control our voltage a little better that way. Okay. The nameplate on a generator, would that actually tell us the output voltage including the loss, or? No. <laughs> it's going to tell you your rate of voltage out here. Okay. Okay. We would then go back and calculate what, what's going on inside there. And you can come up with your internal resistance based on voltage at no load and voltage at full load. Okay? You just back the math out. You can work that out, yeah. So you know how you go in a circle, right? Right. And then you start, you start flattening out on your graph. Okay. Okay, well when it's, I asked you this yesterday, I think, when it starts flattening out, and then it just starts back at the residual magnetism again, right? Okay. And so you're the talking about starts over. you have your graph, and it will come along here and then start dropping, dropping yeah. down. Yeah. And then when it, when it, what, ha what happens when the magnetism is all gone? Does it just use the residual magnetism to start the process over again? It will always be generating some magnetism for you. Okay. You've got your shunt field. <coughs> You've got, you're going to start out here at your rate of voltage, and it will come along and then it will start <coughs> dropping. Okay? It's never going to drop down to baseline. your baseline. You're going to be so far above your rate of current at this point, you're going to be starting to damage your generator. Okay? Your full load current may be somewhere around here. FLA full load amps. Okay, so you're going to get something out of here. It's going to be substantial output all the way to full load amps. Now, a code lets you go to 125% full load amps. Okay, short burst out there. We're not going to continue going. We may do this in the lab just to characterize the generator. Yeah. But it's for a short period of time, so you would never want to run it out here on, at this point on the load, load curve. Okay. When you guys are doing that, you're doing short-term characterizations so that you can see what the generator is doing. Okay. I still get confused when you're saying um, when the current increases, the voltage increases, and then it goes back up, then the okay. voltage decreases. Okay. It's a, it's a circle, right. and it's a dependent of effect on everybody. And if we look at this here, okay, we're going to start off with our residual magnetism, okay? Right. It's over here between the poles. You get that. Once it goes to the second one. Okay, here we go. Might be easier if I put some voltages down here, okay? And um, we worked that. Worked out some voltages here. We move over here so I can see that we've got room for the voltage. Okay. Alright. We start off with, and we had our, and our I, okay. We had three volts. 
That was being generated by the residual magnetism, right? Yeah, right. That's what okay. I'm we do the math on that. Three volts is how many milliamps? Six milliamps, right? That's three over five hundred equals six milliamps, right? Yeah. Okay. Get your calculator out and get it working with me here. So you have six milliamps. Now, we went. Well, we started off, there was no current through here, right? Right. So this was not generating any magnetic field at all. Okay? Now I have 6 milliamps through here. Okay? Is that going to start generating some magnetic field? So we'll, we'll get a few more red mines in here increasing the magnetic field. Okay? Now, that magnetic field increases. Okay? What happens to the output voltage? Goes it goes up, right? Because we have the, the three things that you've got. Speed of the cutting action, strength of the magnetic field, the number of turns of wire. Okay. We can't change the number of turns in this armature while it's running, right? We do that at the manufacturer, it's done. So we can't change the number of turns of wire. Okay. Speed of the cutting action that's your rotational speed of your armature. That's fixed once the motor gets up to speed, right? Okay, so we take away that one. So the only thing left to change our output voltage is the strength of the magnetic field. Okay, the strength of the magnetic field increases. That causes your generated voltage to increase. The voltage increases. Now that will start increasing the current. Okay? the voltage goes up, the current goes up. Exactly. Okay? Now, we're at 3 volts there, right? Yeah. 6 milliamps, and let's say that increase of magnetic field bumped our voltage up to 30 volts. Okay? Now we're going to be looking at what? around, and the second time it comes around, you have 30 volts now. Exactly. Okay? Now we're at 60 milliamps. <coughs> right? Yep. Now we're at 60 milliamps. Do you think our magnetic field it's going to be increasing also? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we get up there to 60 milliamps. Okay. Pump it up. Next thing you know, well, I don't know what, we're at 90 volts. Okay. What does that get us up to? What, 180 <laughs> millivolts? Yep. A milliamps. 180 milliamps. 180 milliamps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we keep increasing our current through our shunt field. And again, the strength of the magnetic field amp turns. It just keeps increasing. Our magnetic field between our pole pieces just keeps increasing. Increasing the strength of the magnetic field, we're going to increase our output voltage from our generator. Okay? Up there to 180 million. Okay? Now, I, I said our final stage was when this was up to 250 milliamps, right? Mm -hmm. So at 250 milliamps, what's our output voltage? So we've got E, I times R, 250 milliamps times 500. What do we have there? 125 volts. Okay, that would be the final output stage under this condition on this for this generator. Okay. okay?